welcome to the Fruit Snacks Podcast. I'm your host, Emily Wardrop from Drop the Ward Life Coaching. I am the T1D Moms Coach. I'm here to help you manage your mental and emotional health while managing your child's diabetes. Two of my five kiddos have been diagnosed, and so I'm very familiar with your struggles, and I don't know where I'd be without these life coaching tools and the gospel of Jesus Christ to get me through the day and night. Thank you for joining me as we journey towards feeling less scared, sad, and stressed, and start feeling more calm, confident, and connected. Let's get started. All right, welcome back to the Fruits Next podcast with Emily Wardrop. That's me. I'm your hostess with the mostess. So today we are going to talk about anger. What? <laughs> We talk about emotions on here a lot, kind of vaguely and kind of um, in general. So maybe we could talk about some specific emotions. That would be fun, right? Because we're dealing with your emotional and mental well-being while managing your child's diabetes. And one of the feelings that comes up a lot for us as T1D moms is anger because we are mad. <laughs> we are mad that our child has diabetes. We're mad at some of us have gone into you know, being mad at the government or mad at um, the man, shall we say, we'll just call it that. Anyway, mad at conspiracies about diabetes, all sorts of things, right? I've talked to a lot of angry mamas. <laughs> um, and it's fine. Like anger is a feeling. And I'm not kidding when I say all of the emotions are okay to feel. Because really, truly, the problem with emotions is not feeling them. It's resisting them. And so we're going to talk about how that looks specifically with anger today. Cause I keep saying that. And it's one of those, yeah, that sounds nice as a life coach in theory, whatever. But like, if we're trying to get down to it for real, let's get some specific examples. So today we're going to talk about anger. Okay. Um, and let me just tell you right off the, well, well I don't know what, <laughs> where to start. <laughs> okay. So I'll just start from the beginning. So right off the bat, I'll let you know where I started thinking about this is um my friend woohoo shout out to elisa fucci you can listen to her podcast elisa fucci show e-l-i-s-a-f-u-c-c-i -C -C elisa fucci um she's amazing we were going live on instagram every week there for a minute so if you go to my instagram it'll be closely connected to her if you want to check her out there Anyway, Elisa is amazing. She's a breathwork facilitator. So we'll get to that in a second. But she's also my really good friend. And so we Marco Polo all the time. And she was talking about this huge aha she had about the subject about suppressing emotion, right? And um, and how the first emotion she noticed that she suppressed all the time was as a mom was guilt, right? Because we talk about mom guilt all the time. I have a whole video series on dropping the mom shame. Because really... <laughs> don't get me started on that subject, but just a quick, <laughs> quick little spiel. We talk about mom guilt all the time. Like it's a bad thing, right? Again, guilt, it's feeling it's fine. In fact, guilt is great because guilt tells you when you're out of alignment with your true self, you did something that's not actually you. And so you feel guilty about it. It's a message, right? All the emotions are messages. So it's okay to feel guilty, but we quickly sour guilt into shame, which again, it's even okay to feel shame. I'm telling you, every emotion is a message. So shame is a lie and it's a message <laughs> from the adversary that says that there's something wrong with you. So guilt says there's something wrong with what you did, which is good to know, you know, that you did something that's out of alignment with your integrity, with your values, with, you know, who you truly are. And so you want to change something, that's fine. Feel guilty. Great. Shame is a lie that there's something wrong with you. There's nothing wrong with you. You are a good mom. I have a whole year's worth of podcasts about this. If you want to go back and listen to all of those, <laughs> there's like over a hundred of them. <laughs> so this podcast is relatively new as the Fruit Snacks podcast, but uh, there's plenty of podcasts about this guilt, shame. There's nothing wrong with you. Well, we are eternal beings shoved into a little mortal body that has a hard time with all this stuff. So we tend to go to shame and make it mean something about us as a person that we are bad. And that is a lie. You are good. Okay. So that's how I battle um, the shame. I just, you, you can just drop the war on the shame and embrace the guilt. Anyway, all this to say, Elisa was feeling too much mom guilt. And so she suppressed it, right? And then as she learned about these emotional wellness tools, she was like, oh, okay, I'm going to stop suppressing this guilt, whatever she did, all that work, right? 
Um, I forget what the next one she said that she worked on, but then she just realized this aha recently about suppressing anger because of course, when you're a kid (laughs) and you feel angry and you pitch a little tantrum, you get in trouble, right? So then as kids, we learn to suppress anger because we're learning to suppress all of our emotions because our parents can't handle their own emotions, let alone ours, right? We had no idea how to do any of this work ever until recently. So I'm not blaming our parents. It's all good. I'm not blaming me who still hasn't figured it out. I totally still do this to my kids. I literally very admittedly cannot handle their big emotions (laughs) because they cause big emotions in me and I don't like them and I can't handle my big emotions. And then I handle my emotions bad and they're handling their emotions bad. And it's just all quote unquote, bad all over the place. But see how that's a moral judgment, bad. So this is what we're going to, um, this is what we're going to drop the war on today is that the emotions are not bad. Even the way you handle them is not necessarily bad. So yes, hitting is bad. Kicking is bad. Even, Oh, hold on. Okay. I'm back. (laughs) And this is what happens when you don't actually edit your podcast (laughs) because you're a mom with five kids and two have diabetes and you're just doing this for fun on the side and your client is calling. (laughs) So you're going to go coach and get back to your podcast after you wake up your kids and get them off to school and, um, take care of your baby until it's time for nap time. And then you can get back to recording the podcast. (laughs) So here I am. Um, thank you for hanging with me without having a professional editing, publishing. Um, Isn't that nice of them to let me publish a podcast without it being beautiful? Okay. Thanks for listening. Okay. We're talking about how no emotions are bad, right? So when we call something bad, it's kind of like a, a moral judgment, right? Good and bad. We've brought morality into it. So we do have values, right? We do have morals. We do think that some things are bad. So we're trained as kids that hitting is bad right? And I tend to agree with that. (laughs) So I'm going to continue to keep that as a moral. I don't think that you should hit people, right? So as an adult, and I'm standing in line at the grocery store, and somebody does something I don't like, and it raises up some sort of anger in me, I'm not going to hit them. Because I have a prefrontal cortex (laughs) in my brain that um, helps me to feel emotions and not act them out. But the thing is, um, hold on, that's a whole nother tangent. Let me take note and we'll get back to that. (laughs) It's the most effective way to release an emotion. Um, Now I want to follow that tangent, but I'm starting to tell you. Okay, bad is not a moral issue. Okay, so if we drop the morality, uh, we um, drop the resistance. Because here's the thing. Is feeling angry morally wrong? You get to decide, right? I mean, maybe you have a moral compass, like, like in the church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, where I go, we have a prophet and he gets to, um, talk to God and tell us what God says for the church. And so maybe he said that God said that hitting is bad. So I'm going to believe him and I'm going to, um, adopt that standard of morality, right? That hitting is bad. Um, but ultimately we have agency, right? God sent us down to earth and told us to make our own choices and to learn from them. And so if I hit somebody and that doesn't end up well for me, maybe I'm going to learn hitting people is not a good idea because I'm going to get hit back a lot harder (laughs) because I can't hit so hard. Um, anyway, all of that (laughs) tangent about morality is just to say that feeling angry, I don't believe is a moral bad thing. It's just an emotion. So I personally do not at this point in time, as I'm recording this, believe that there are any immoral feelings. Okay. So it's not bad to feel bad. It just feels bad. That's it. So it's not bad to feel resentful. It's not bad to feel jealous. It's not bad to feel anxiety. It's not bad to feel depressed. It's not bad to feel um, je- I already said jealous. So what are all the feelings that we think feel so bad to feel scarcity? Like these are just feelings people. And as soon as we start making them bad, then we resist them and then they wreak havoc in our body and actually cause a problem. So literally the co- the client that just interrupted the podcast, this is what we talked about, right? She wakes up with anxiety, is a ball in her stomach. It's She's trying to do her thought work to change the feeling. And I'm like, what if 
it's not bad to feel that. Like it feels bad. I get it. There's a lot of emotions that don't feel great in the body, but emotions are a message. So if you're going to do some thought work, do the thought work. How is this feeling helping me? What is the message that I'm supposed to be receiving from feeling this way? But really in the heat of the moment, you've already thought the thought, you're feeling the feeling. All you can do is the feeling work, which is just feel it. And we talk about this on this podcast a lot, so maybe I'm not going to go on that tangent. But the point is that they're not bad. Okay. Maybe you've labeled them as feeling bad, but the interesting thing is they like to talk about how excitement and um, nervousness, like if you find in your body where it is, it's kind of in the same place and it kind of feels the same. So really all we've done is label it good or bad because nervous is bad and excited is good. So we're like, before we go on stage, if we're feeling a little jittery, just feel jittery, just feel the feels. And if you want to label it, as excited that that helps you get more motivated to go out on stage and do what you got to do, then go for it. If you want to label it as nervous and then freak out and not go out on stage and not do it either way, you felt a little jitters in your stomach, little butterflies, right? I love butterflies. We're not going down that tangent either. Okay. So it's not good or bad. (laughs) It just is. And the secret to the emotion work, right? We're talking about feeling angry right now is to feel angry. So kids feel emotions and they act them out. We are adults, so we don't do that anymore because we've been trained out of it. But I suggest that instead of training out of it in a repression sort of way, because that's what we've all done, right? Because maybe we were crying about something and our mom said, oh, I'll give you a reason to cry, (laughs) which is a terrible thing for mom to say. And we all say terrible things as moms, right? It's okay. We're not hating on our moms. They all did the best they could. And we're trying to just do a little bit better every day because we have those tapes in our head. We're going to say those same things. And if we're hating on our mom for saying it, then we're hating on ourselves for saying it too. Cause I open my mouth and my mom comes out. Right? So it's all good, but really I'll give you something to cry about. Come on. What did that do to us? That made us repress our emotions. We were feeling something. We were expressing it with tears and our parents did not get it. <laughs> and I'm telling you as a mom, That happens to me still. My kids are freaking out about stuff. And I'm like, what is the big deal for the love? Like just share, you know? And, and I just want to, I want them to suppress their emotions so that I don't have to feel the big emotions of being annoyed that they're fighting over whatever toy that why can't they just take turns? Right? So after the fact, we can go back and do the thought work, whatever. But in the heat of the moment, what you do is feel it. So I'm feeling annoyed that the kids are fighting over the toys. I don't need to get them to stop fighting. They can figure that out themselves. I mean, unless again, it's come to blows. (laughs) If someone's actually not safe, then I can step in and like keep the, you know, perpetrator from hurting the the poor prey, right? But uh, remember, I'm the mama bear here and both of those are my kids. (laughs) You go in mama bear mode of the poor kid that's getting hit, but the kid who's hitting is mine too. (laughs) Anyway, sorry. I don't know why I expect myself to not go on tangents. My people love me for me. They love my tangents. Okay. Thanks for still listening. Okay. So it's not bad. (laughs) Hold on. We've moved on to, okay. It's the most efficient way to get rid of the emotion. Okay. So kids know this, they don't have that prefrontal cortex developed. They don't suppress stuff. They just act it out because that is how you get an emotion out of your body. There are very efficient ways to do it. Like yelling, hitting, screaming, punching, (laughs) like, um, uh, the ways that we train ourselves to do it is to stuff it right? To just don't feel it. Just don't say anything. Just don't be rude. Don't be mean. Don't be, you know? And so what are we instead of rude and mean and hitting? We're all full of the emotion in our body still. So we do need to get the emotions out of our body. We need to process them through. And the safest way to do that is through breathing. I talk about breathing all the time because it's available all the time. All we have to do is remember to tap in. So instead of um, busting into the kids fighting over whatever they're fighting over. We calm ourselves. We go and we take a time out. We don't throw the kid who's fighting with the other kid. They're learning how to get along. They're developing skills that we're trying to suppress. <laughs> we're like, don't develop those emotional or interpersonal skills. Just stop it. 
right? We just want them to stop because it's bringing up emotions in us. So we take care of our own emotions. We go to a different room, we breathe, we go somewhere where their sound is not triggering us and we do our own self-regulation, feel our feelings before we have to act them out on them, right? Because we're trying to teach them not to hit. We're trying to teach them that violence is not the answer. We're trying to teach them not to yell by yelling at them, right? No, no. I mean, we are, and that's okay, but we're trying not to, right? So, so if we look at it as that's the most effective and efficient way to get rid of an emotion, wow, aren't they so efficient? <laughs> because have you noticed that's what they do? They scream and then they're all better. And that's what we do too. We scream and then we feel all better, but then we have to deal with the havoc that that caused, right? So um, maybe just like kids be kids, they know how to get their emotions out. It's us that needs the emotional regulation, okay? So we're about to, again, this is just always the example I'm gonna use when I go back to T1D. So we're gonna change out their insulin pump and they're freaking out because they don't like it. Of course they don't. Who would? I mean, I don't know about you, but I put a huge sticker on top of the insulin pump too to make sure that it doesn't rip off accidentally, even though it only stays on there for three days. So that sticker is like a ginormous Band-Aid every three days. Are you kidding me? I, I feel for you, baby. I do. And I still have to do this, <laughs> you know? So we all have all the feelings, right? So we're just breathing. We're feeling our own feelings. We're not trying to get them to stop pitching a fit because of course they're pitching a fit. They have all the best reasons. And they're feeling these huge emotions. And if we just let them feel their emotions out by pitching a fit, then they don't suppress them and have to do these breathwork sessions with Elisa Fucci once they're adults to get all that suppressed emotion out. So let me go on that tangent for a second because that's what she does. It's amazing. So our whole life, ever since we're kids, we're suppressing emotions, right? We're just stuffing them, stuffing them. And sometimes we get to have times where we can like unload our emotional backpack, but a lot of things are just stuffed into our bodies and now they're manifesting because we're old. <laughs> And we can't, we can't handle it anymore. So I have like this, I always say I hold my tension in my traps, you know, like up in my shoulder into my neck. And I had this sore trap that I just could not get rid of. Like you can't massage it out. You can't stretch it out. You can't yoga it out. Like it was there all the time until I did a breathwork session with Elisa. And all of a sudden, a couple of days later, I realized it was gone. And I was like, what? <laughs> so like, I literally hold my tension in my shoulders, like all the emotions that I've been feeling all my life and not processing out were in that shoulder. And in one breathwork session, we cleared it out. I was like, what is this magic sauce? So I'm not messing with you. Check her out, Elisa Fucci on Instagram to find all the ways that you can work with her. It's amazing. And that doesn't even like start the beginning of how all those breathwork sessions were so amazing in so many ways, but like literally physically, because we hold our emotions in. So we got to get them out in a healthy way, right? We got to learn and then teach our kids emotional management, right? And the best way to teach them modeling. So as we learn this, then they they stop and take breaths when they're feeling feelings because they've watched you stop and take breaths when you're feeling feelings. It's so fun. It's so rewarding. It's so fun to watch them do something you do that's positive. <laughs> Cause usually like we talked about a couple of weeks ago, they're little mirrors of all our negative things that we don't like about ourselves. But, um, hello, there's a million things that you do love about yourself and your kids are picking up on those too. And it's wonderful. Oh, I love it when they apologize to each other. When you don't make them apologize, you just let them feel the natural consequence. And it's been modeled to them from apologizing to them a million times. Oh, so good. Okay. So it's the most effective way to release emotion. So don't judge it. Like it, you don't have to judge that you're at, that you're feeling angry. That's not bad. You yell. That's not inherently bad necessarily. It's just a really effective way to get your emotion out. So why it's bad is the effect that it has on everyone around you. And we want to be kind and we want to be loving and we want to be patient. But those feelings are really hard to come by when you're feeling angry, <laughs> right? And so we got to just let ourselves feel angry. And then when we notice it coming up, right, always on our dial from green to red, like let's catch anger long before it turns into like fuming hot red flames out the top of our head that all we can do is scream them out. Let's catch it when it's like an earlier emotion. Sometimes anger can be a, a piled on emotion from a bunch of other stuff like stress and worry and sadness that we feel about the diabetes. So we hide the more vulnerable feelings that we're feeling with anger. So let's go underneath to the most vulnerable feelings. And if you don't want to talk about those with anybody you know, then that's what I'm for as your coach. 
So um, we can process those emotions so that they don't have to escalate into rage, right? Okay. Now, here's the other thing I have in my note. I talked about bad. I talked about resisting them is the problem, right? So what the whole thing is about allowing. We're back to our second AAA battery, right? As we get the awareness that we're feeling angry, we allow the anger. We just feel it. I promise you resisting it is what makes it explode. So all the feelings that lead up to it, if we just allow them, we're like, yes, I am sad. This is so sad. That my child has to go through this. This is sad that I have to go through this. This is sad that this is a forever thing. Like there's no light at the end of this tunnel. It is sad. So you just feel sad. You don't have to think a new thought to feel a different thing. You don't have to think about where it is in your body and da, da, da. like that's still in your head. You get in your body and you just feel sad. And for me, my go-to obviously is tears. <laughs> like that's my very efficient way to process emotions. They all come out my eyeballs. <laughs> and, um, and if you've been holding back tears for a long time, then that's something that comes up in breathwork sessions too, where I'll just like cry and our brains out and all the things, right? Because we are dumping those emotions, right? Okay. So, um, okay. This is the other thing I wanted to say. So I, as I've been trying to grow the podcast, I tell people about it and, and I'm like, Hey, any feedback or any ideas are welcome. And the only feedback I've gotten back is you talk about Jesus a lot. I'm not really into that. And I'm like, okay, then that's probably not the podcast for you. Cause I'm going to continue to talk about Jesus a lot. And, um, and one of the reasons is, or one of the things I want to say about that in regards to anger is that we get angry at God, right? One of the things that's, he can handle it. It's fine. You know, he knows perfectly well how to handle emotions because uh, he invented them or something. I don't know. But I'm pretty sure he understands our human emotion because he put us in this condition. Okay. And so he knows that anger is fine. He can handle it. Like yell at him because he's perfect. He can handle the yelling. It's not going to damage him. So if you need to yell, yell at God, <laughs> right? And ask him like legit, if you have questions for him, ask him why? That's what we all want to know. Why? Why does my baby have to go through this? Why do I have to go through this? Why does our family have to go through this? Why? And get your own answers. Because I have my answers that I share with you on here. And they just fall flat if they're not your own. But prayer is real. God is there. Ask him. If you're mad at him, tell him. I am so mad right now. Like This is not fun. This is not fair. Oh my gosh, I have a fair police daughter in my family. <laughs> she says it's not fair all the time. And it's not fair in her favor usually, which then that triggers me and I get all dysregulated. But um, it's not fair. I say to my kids all the time, life is not fair. And this is one of my, the fair police daughter, she is not one of my diabetics. <laughs> so that's one of the things I say to her all the time. I'm like, you want life to be fair? Do you want diabetes too? Because <laughs> usually it's not fair because she doesn't get fruit snacks. I'm like, yeah, well, they got fruit snacks because they got a low blood sugar and blah, blah, blah. And even her brother who doesn't have diabetes, but gets very hangry <laughs> with his low blood sugar. So the fruit snacks are for everybody, right? Again, shake your fruit snacks and solidarity here, T1D moms. Case okay, so for all the kids, <laughs> all the low blood sugars, whether they have a Dexcom on them or not, right? Okay. So anyway, life is not fair. Where did we get this idea? Like this is something that came with our human brain. Some of them anyway, the fair police children and adults. Life's not fair, people. And that's part of the plan. Like you ask God and he will explain to you the plan for your child because that is your stewardship. You were given stewardship over yourself, your body, and then your body created these children or maybe you adopted them or whatever. In some way you have stewardship over them, right? And so God will give you revelation for your family. And that is what I do as your coach is I help you tap into your own intuition, into your own answers, into what God is trying to tell you on how to raise your kids. Okay. Cause no parenting expert knows how to raise your kids. You know how to raise your kids and you know how to handle the diabetes. And when, yes, we need expert help. Yes, we do what the doctors say, whatever, but you know, best, you know, best, especially if you have a terrible doctor, <laughs> which I luckily have an amazing doctor. <laughs> Um, and I trust him way more than me, especially when it comes to numbers and calculating stuff. No way. So I am definitely not discrediting that, but I'm saying like in the micro adjustments all day long, um, God wants to help you. He's given you this trial for a reason. It is for your growth and development. It is for the growth and development of your kid. As soon as my daughter was diagnosed the first time, one of my brothers said to me, 
all the diabetic people that I know are the toughest people. You know how they got so tough? Maybe they already were tough and God knew that they could handle this or maybe they got tough because they went through really hard things. Like it's the hard stuff that makes us strong and we're here for growth and development. And that does not happen in ease. It happens by trusting in God, relying on him. You can be mad at him as long as you need to, because he knows that you'll come around and he'll soft, help soften your heart and, um, and see that really all of this has a purpose that we will never know until the next life, probably because we're going to be in the thick of it the whole time. And every now and then maybe we'll see some fun little miracles that came because of it. But in the end, all of the hard stuff that we all go through, it's going to be rose colored glasses looking backwards, right? Like in the thick of it, it's just hard. So just let it be hard. Feel all the feelings you need to feel. If you need to feel angry, go ahead. If you need to talk to somebody about it, that's not going to get damaged <laughs> by your anger, then hit me up, drop the lifecoach.com forward slash appointments. I do free consults, which means it's just a free coaching session. And then at the end, if you're interested in learning more about how to work with me, then I'll tell you. But if you're not, then we just get off the call. And if you want to be my bestie and get coached for $25 a session, then you can do that too. Like I literally coach for free, coach for almost free, or I have other coaching packages that if you want to pay me happy money, then I'll take your money. <laughs> um, anyway, all of that's on my appointments page. And the website has tons of information about all the things. And if you don't even have T1D kids, all of that's still on there too. Because I used to just be the coach for moms of young kids. So if any of this is resonating in any way, please go check out my website. I want to help you. Um, podcasting is very lonely. <laughs> I'm just talking to myself. I'm talking to the trees outside my window. Actually, this morning it was dark outside. And as I was coaching somebody, the light came up, you know, the sun came up and the light started showing outside, which was really fun because it was happening at the same time. She was having all these aha moments and it was like she was seeing light bulbs, you know, and like just the room. Lit. It was fun. Anyway, and I and then it was snowing. It had been snowing the whole time, but I didn't know because it was dark outside. <laughs> anyway, now it's just kind of meh. It definitely looks like January out there. But for a minute this morning, it looked like Christmas, which was fun to wake the kids up with. Anyway, enough of my rambling. Are we done? Is that enough about anger? If you want to talk about it, if you have questions, you can DM me on Instagram. I'm sort of on Facebook too, but I probably won't see those as as quickly. Um, anyway, let's just make it a two-way conversation because talking to myself is fun, but talking to you is even more fun. So uh, talk to you next time. Bye. Hey, T1D moms. Was that episode helpful? I put together a free video for you with my top three brain hacks for T1D moms. Check it out at dropthewar.com forward slash top three. Having a child with diabetes is hard enough. Let's not make it any harder with the way we're thinking about it all. Get my free top three brain hacks for T1D moms video at dropthewar.com forward slash top three. See you there. my sweet T1D parent friend. The next time you catch yourself thinking that you can't do this anymore, redirect your brain to Philippians 4.13 and remind yourself that you can do all things through Christ which strengthens you. As your life coach, I'm here to be a conduit to help you get your brain and body aligned in order for your spirit to clearly communicate with his spirit to become your own diabetes parenting expert. Go to dropthewar.com forward slash appointments for your complimentary coaching session and let's do this thing. Thank you.